And for the rest of this hour, I've got a few comments here, and then I want to take your calls and then cover some of the remaining news that we haven't yet had a chance to cover. And uh, mention uh, a couple of good films here, State of Mind. you got to check this out at InfoWarsStore.com. But uh, so before I was hosting the show, one of my friends asked me, he said, Mike, are you going you gonna to talk about uh, same-sex marriage? Because you haven't, you know, you haven't really gone on the record. What do you think about same-sex marriage? And you're hosting Alex's show. You got you to gotta talk about that, aren't you? Aren't you going to talk about it? Well, I, I don't know. All this talk about same-sex marriage and opposite-sex marriage. And from what I hear, most Americans would be happy with any sex in their marriage. <laughs> it's like it's a no-sex marriage. But... Uh, I'm not even really sure. I, I'm not sure if we can enforce all these rules one way or another because personally, I I can't tell the gender of some of these people. So I'm not. I'm. I mean, I'm not trying to be you know insulting or anything. I'm just saying I can't tell. You've got some of these, um, you know, macho gay women riding around and trying to pick up dates, riding on Harleys, like. Vroom, vroom. You want to go on a ride? <laughs> no, no, I don't want to go on a ride. Not with you, no. Please, no. I mean, <laughs> if you go on a date with one of these gals, you gotta. It's almost like you gotta buy them a plane ticket on the first date so you can march them through TSA for a gender check. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's it's like slip a a fifty to the agent and ask him, hey, what's the verdict, buddy? Am I dating a dude <laughs> or a chick? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I know it's not politically correct. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, why do we have to have all this discussion about all these things? And there's so many more important issues out there, like the fluoride in the water. Why do we have to be obsessed about what what gender people are when, when they get married? I mean, how does the TSA even tell, by the way, if someone comes in and they're not sure? I mean, do they have like a gender neutral line? You know, a pat down, like uh uh, someone there named Pat doing the pat down. Hi, I'm I'm Pat Down Pat. I'm going to pat you down today. I'm the gender neutral TSA pat down expert. I was highly trained as the head of security at Michael Jackson's Neverland Ranch, and we have a very special pat down procedure that we use there. <laughs> uh, is that the way they really do it? Seriously? Um, but, you know, back on the issue of same-sex marriage, I mean, come on, if, if, if Michael Moore marries Janet Napolitano, isn't that a same-sex marriage? I mean, really? Isn't, isn't that, doesn't that qualify? Because, you know, <laughs> who are we to say that they can't have their fun together, their joy, frolicking in the sunset, hand-in-hand, hand, bounding through fields of clover? You know, off into the sunset? It, it would be wonderful. Can, can you imagine those two getting married up, up there at the altar? It was like the reverend says, I now pronounce you man and wife. You may kiss the bride. And then both of their heads turn like the exorcist. 360 degrees. There is no bride. What? There's no bride. And then they start to kiss and there's like hormones and pheromones flying and exploding every which away. Like a bad scene out of the Rocky Horror Picture Show. The cross-dressing transvestites appear on stage and start dancing in a musical number with meatloaf. And then George Carlin and Richard Pryor come back to life and show up on stage and their heads turn and see these two French kissing in matrimony and their heads explode out of the sheer horror of it. So, so yeah, I'm all for it. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, at least that's how it plays out in my head. And uh, so uh, go ahead, go ahead and roll. That's a comedy bit, by the way, folks, that's. That's called exercising your free speech. That's a comedy bit <laughs> aimed at some public figures that deserve to be made fun of. Just, just a little bit. Just a little bit. So uh, let's go to some calls, get a little more serious here. you got to have fun from time to time because it's, it's too insane to take seriously all the time. Let's go to Phil in Florida. Phil, you're on the show. Welcome to the Alex Jones Show. Hey, Mr. Adams. Thanks, thanks for everything. Thanks for having me on. You betcha. Um, yeah, I just... Uh, I just had a question. I mean, I, I was surprised when everybody was surprised about this NA stuff, mostly because Alex and yourself have opened my eyes to exactly how corrupt and gigantic our, our government has become. 
Uh, and I don't know. I mean, I'm not saying that Mr. the Snowden story is a distractor, but I don't know whatever happened to this check and dude the FBI executed over here in Orlando. Which guy? The the Chechen guy that they were interviewing that supposedly knew the two oh. bombers in Boston. Right. Yeah, I haven't heard anything on that. And uh, last thing I heard, the FBI was investigating it. And that was a month ago. Well, this is the problem that the scandals are coming so fast and furious, <laughs> pun intended, that you don't even have time to dig into one before another one crops up. And they know that the attention span of the people is so short that they will just jump from one scandal to the next. And, and then when you want to go back to one that you haven't fully uncovered, they'll say, oh, that's old news is no longer relevant. So that's, I think that's what's happening. Uh, I mean, if, if, you know, who knows what that guy had? Yeah, you know, exactly. I mean, supposedly he knew this kid and now he's dead. No one can ask him. So well, that, we, that's what I wanted to ask Mr. Matt. Thank, thanks for having me on and hopefully someone will look into it a little more. You bet, Phil. Thanks for your call. I mean, we do know that the death squads are operating in America. Uh, some rogue element of the government is running around killing people. We know that's true. And just for the record, I want to be on the record, like Alex said, uh, <laughs> I'm not suicidal. I don't drive fast cars down the highway. I don't drink alcohol. I don't visit prostitutes. I don't use recreational drugs. I'm not into any of that stuff. So if they try to set me up with that stuff, you know it's staged. I mean, <laughs> if the only if, if I die like in a farm equipment accident, that might be real because <laughs> it's like a John Deere ran over him or something. You know that 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 could be real because uh, I'm actually out there on the farm. But I try to be safe. So let's go to a white grand wizard in Florida, Mister Wizard. Welcome to the show. Yes, hello, Mister Adams. Um, I'd like to ask. Alex of InfoWars team, if they're going to do a documentary or a movie on the trains, the guillotine trains that are all around America, um, where they are, who built them, um, when they're supposed to be used, et cetera, that point. Well, I will certainly pass on that comment. The thing is, I keep hearing about these trains full of guillotines. I... I got to profess, I've never seen any photos of this. I don't know that that's real. I, people keep telling me. I don't. I just don't know. Why would they use guillotines in the first place? It sounds like a lot of trouble to go through when you could just unleash a biological weapon and just do it much more quickly. I mean, why well, would... that's a good question in itself, but I've seen photos of those trains. They're three stories. They're three stacks high, you know, three levels high, and they each have a guillotine. You know, you ride around, you kill people, and then you dump them off in a mass grave. That's my assumption. Well, I mean, it's just way more efficient ways to kill people. You know, bullets, for example. I mean, the DHS has bought all that ammunition. That's probably a much faster way. I think probably, I, I, I'm just guessing, I'm just putting this out there, that maybe these, these are some kind of mechanical parts that look like guillotines, but maybe they're not guillotines. I, I'm just saying, that's just conjecture. I don't. I profess I don't know the situation. We'll look into it. But thanks for your call, uh, Mr. Wizard. We'll we'll look into the guillotine situation. I, I don't know, man. I guess nothing would surprise me at this point. Let's go to Dylan in uh, Minnesota, I believe. Welcome, Dylan. Hi, Mike. Um, yeah, I was really hoping to get through to Wayne Morrison, but uh, but um, I suppose I'll address my question to you. Um, I was curious if there was any new information on Philip Marshall. He was a 9-11 researcher, and uh, apparently he, formally, he used to fly in uh, cocaine for the CIA, which he admitted in the 80s, and he was found dead in his home with his uh, two children who were also deceased. And, uh, well, I'm not aware neighbors. of any additional information on that individual. In fact, that's the first time I've heard his name. I haven't. I'm sorry, uh, I'm not a specialist on, you know, the CIA drug running situation. Uh, but now that you put, put it out there here on the show, maybe others will, will uh, bring some information forth on that. I, I, I appreciate your question. There's a lot of leads that need to be followed up here because I think all the evidence is out there. We just, we don't have the manpower here at InfoWars to run like full on investigations into every single thing that needs to be investigated. We're just, we're doing the best we can, but thank you for your tip. Uh, maybe that'll spur some information to be brought forth. Let's go to another caller, Bobby in Texas. Thank you, Bobby. Welcome to the show. 
from proudly a male warrior sentient world revolutionary number nine fighting the quantum world simulators and all those confused at best truly evil most likely lockstep sociopaths waging war on all of us especially babies that is Why quite not? quite a number there reefer seed is this reefer seed <laughs> <laughs> By golly, you picked me out one more time. Uh, well, you have a very particular voice, but uh, nice intro there. What's on your mind, buddy? Well, just briefly, why not let gays just use another name than marriage, like civil unions? But more importantly, I want to thank you, sir, Mike Adams, for everything you do for all of us. And by the way, today's doubling of student loan interest rates is part of the truly evil sociopath's plan to impoverish and destroy our once proud constitutional republic. Well, there it's is a plan underway. I mean, it's not only the student loan rates, it's also the health insurance rates doubling for single women in California. I don't know if you heard that earlier. The Obamacare exchanges are about to kick in. Rates are going to go up for everybody. Uh, they're trying to destroy uh, everybody, including, as you've experienced, free speech. Are they letting you go into the Capitol building anymore and, and protest these days? I'm not allowed to speak at the Travis County Commissioner's Court sessions. I can speak at City Hall, but only once in every four meetings. But anyway, <laughs> I, I plan to... I plan to buy at least, by the way, two Bokashi food waste recyclers so as to have both organic and non-organic <laughs> soil to work with. You know, nice, of nice. Of course, I prefer to buy only well, organic. Well, we've got to go to a break, but uh, nice to hear from you again. Thanks for your call and your questions. Hi, this is Mike Adams, the Health Ranger, with some news about some new additions to the InfoWars store. You know good health is freedom. When you're healthy, you're not a slave to the medical system. Everything works well, your brain, your body, even your spirit. You're a healthier person. And to help support that great health, Alex has asked me to source the cleanest, most potent superfoods and other similar products in the world and bring them to the InfoWars store. So we've done that. The brand name is Health Ranger Select. And we're starting out right now with these three products. We've got Himalayan salt from Pakistan, formed hundreds of thousands of years ago in an ancient seabed long before modern pollution destroyed much of the oceans. This is loaded with trace minerals and it's pristine, true, full spectrum sea salt. We've also got natural attitude turmeric. It's an extract of turmeric, very potent, tastes great, alcohol free. This is from organic turmeric out of India. And we've also got clean chlorella. And we sourced and, and did research on all the chlorella sources around the world. And we found the two cleanest sources that have the lowest levels of any kind of contaminants. In fact, this one is virtually free of all metals and all contaminants. It's called clean chlorella and it's, it's about two thirds protein and it's got chlorophyll and chlorella growth factor in it. Check it out online. It's an amazing superfood that athletes are using and people are using to help support healthy lifestyles. It's fantastic. This is all packaged in our certified organic facility here in Central Texas. There we follow USDA certified standards and we're audited every year by the USDA certifier to make sure that we comply with all organic standards. That combined with the fact that we only source super clean superfoods and raw materials from around the world means that our products represent the cleanest and most potent products that you'll find across the natural products industry. Check all of these out under the Health Ranger Select brand name at the InfoWars store, InfoWarsStore.com. And we'll be bringing you more of these in the near future. Thanks and take care. I am a guest volunteer host. So I guess I'm only here because the listeners like me to come back. And so Alex invites me back. So, you know, as long as he keeps doing that, I'll, I'll keep coming back and I'll give you my take on things. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to be uh, politically correct. I'm not going to be censored. I'm going to lay out the issues as I see them. And I'm not going to be intimidated by critics out there that want me to shut up and not talk about the issues that uh, really matter. So, you know, there you go. I have no boss. I can't be fired. I'm not on the payroll. So there you go. That's why I'm telling the truth. Now, um, speaking of the truth, this is a discussion that I, that I had planned for today, and then we'll go to your calls after this, after the next break, but this is a discussion I call the rise of the machines and why the future doesn't need you. I want to elaborate on what Alex said last week. Now, here's the thing. The technology is becoming viable now to have, in the next couple of decades, humanoid-shaped robots. They'll probably be about five foot nine. They want to make them a little bit shorter than a typical you know, American male to be slightly less intimidating. They will be powered by quantum computing processing units that have very high-end vision recognition systems, motor coordination skills, 
and the corporations will be able to buy them to replace workers to do light labor work. Now, the first application of this is, of course, going to be in the military. They will be soldiers on the field. They will be commanded by a human soldier that's the key decision maker, but the actual grunts that are carrying the rifles and doing the real hard frontline battle work like defusing IEDs, that's going to be done by robotic soldiers. And we're showing on screen, by the way, an actual walking robotic soldier that's being uh, developed by Boston Dynamics, for those of you watching on PrisonPlanet.tv. So it is becoming a reality very quickly. And these look creepy, spooky, real life robots, humanoid robots. But as they become less expensive and they go into mass production, then the corporations are going to start buying them to replace workers. Why is that? <laughs> Main reason, unions. You see, corporations don't want to deal with unions. And if they hire robots to replace people, then they don't have to negotiate with the union for the robot. Uh, you know, whether you, I know a lot of you out there listening are in unions and, and you may be thinking, holy cow, that's crazy, but it's true. Your corporation would rather not have a human do the job if they could have a robot do the job. So what's going to happen is we're going to have robots creeping into the, the low level labor supply, displacing the low level labor workers, which includes, by the way, most of the current so-called illegal immigrants, undocumented workers who might be granted amnesty if the amnesty bill becomes law, they're going to be, you know, doing a lot of agricultural work, harvesting crops and so on. They will be one of the first to be replaced by labor robots. So you're going to have millions and millions of displaced workers who used to be undocumented immigrants now have blue card status in the U.S. potentially, and now they're out of work. And by the way, everybody that's working in fast food, if you're a fast food cashier, your job is going to be replaced by a robot in the next couple of decades. You're going to become obsolete. This is going to happen higher and higher in the workforce as robots become more complex and more capable. What it means is that pr probably eventually up to 70, 80, maybe even 90 percent of the workforce is going to become obsolete. You get that? Obsolete in the minds of the globalists that run the system. So in their minds, they're thinking, okay, we've got robots taking over the jobs. All these billions of people are displaced out of the workforce. They've got no jobs. They've got no way to make a living. They've got no skills that we need now because the robots can do the work for them. What are you going to do if you're a globalist? Holocaust 2.0 is what you're going to do. You're going to soft kill masses of people, or you're going to put in infertility technologies to make sure that nobody can reproduce, thereby reducing the human population, leaving only the top 10% that have skills that robots can't replace. Those are skills like engineering skills, entrepreneurial skills, business, finance skills, artist skills. You know, a robot can't be an artist because it doesn't have the spirit, the free will consciousness of creation in it, like an artist can create a work of art. You're always going to have value in society. But if you're a low-end laborer out there, eventually you or your children or your grandchildren are going to become obsolete and replaced by the robots. So the solution to this, you can't stop the robots, right? They're coming. The technology is moving forward. DARPA is doing the investments. They want the soldiers. The corporations want the workers. You can't stop that. What you can do out there is upgrade your value, invest in your own education, improve your skills. Be somebody, I mean, be somebody that has a skill that a robot can't replace and teach your children to be that way and your grandchildren to be that way. They can be safe in a society even if there is a Holocaust 2.0 that tries to get rid of the lower class of workers that the globalists are trying to kill. That's the Rise of the Machines segment. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Now you can watch Alex Jones live at Infowars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the Infowars nightly news, and over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones radio show live as it happened. So check it out, Infowars.com forward slash show. Virginia college student arrested after buying bottled water. Oh my, uh, the, uh, the undercover officer 
thought she had uh, alcohol in her in her possession when she had actually just left a, some kind of convenience store buying bottled water. So she was she was arrested because I guess there's not enough real crimes going on. So you know the FBI, the ATF, the alcohol enforcement people have to run around, you know, making up victims, making up their own crimes so they can arrest somebody. It's crazy. I mean, aren't there real crimes going on that that you could investigate? I mean, why isn't the FBI out there, you know, investigating all the corporate corruption in the pharmaceutical industry? There's, you want to find criminals, just go to the top of that little cabal right there. Apple applies for the iWatch trademark. Yes, uh, a lot of people think that means that they're going to have a wearable watch technology that will, of course, watch you. <laughs> so if you actually want to wear an extension of the NSA on your wrist, It'll probably monitor, you know, your heartbeat so that when you're being uh, interrogated by the TSA at airport security, they can determine if you have an elevated heart rate or something like that. I, I bet it will monitor your heart rate and report it back to <laughs> Apple because there's nothing, there's nothing that they won't do now to <laughs> violate your privacy. Um Another news item here, the Monsanto-funded World Food Prize has been granted to, well, Monsanto. <laughs> yes, Monsanto funded an organization that gave itself an award, the World Food Prize Award, which is uh, granted to somebody that apparently helps advance human development by spreading genetic pollution all around the world. And so they came up with their own prize and financed it and then gave it to themselves. This would be like, like, I don't know, InfoWars coming up with the InfoWars award and then awarding it to Alex Jones. I mean, it's so, it's so self-serving for Monsanto to do this. It's a complete joke. You notice, by the way, at the highest levels of government and corruption, they're always giving each other awards and, and, and academic degrees and knighthoods and all these things. It's like, Oh, yeah, on the day that they're bombing some innocent civilians somewhere, they'll give them, you know, the, the Peace Prize, the Obama Peace Prize, because his bombs are love bombs. They don't blow up. They blow in. <laughs> All right, let's go to a video, then we'll go to your calls after this. Saddam was a key in an early CIA plot, it turns out. This is... This is news that is suddenly resurging in interest. Let's run this video clip about Saddam Hussein. So we decided that Saddam Hussein ought to accept something very similar. Now, probably a lot of you know that Saddam has been our boy for a very, very long time. This is John Perkins uh, you talking. You remember uh, Abdul Karim Qasim, who was president of Iraq in the early 60s. Qasim came up with a unique concept. He said... Iraqi oil ought to go to benefit the Iraqi people. How novel is that? Well, we didn't like that very much. He began to tax the oil companies, particularly the British and some American companies, and threatened to nationalize our oil companies. And so we decided that Qasim had to go. We, the CIA sent an assassination team. It was headed by a man who was still going through high school, an Iraqi citizen who was still going through high school. Uh, they, uh, they riddled Qasim's car with bullets on the streets of Baghdad and missed him. The head of this assassination team was wounded and fled to Syria. His name was Saddam Hussein. He was a CIA agent in those days, an assassin for us. He failed. He was our boy. He was our man. And so, in the and we sold him a lot of, and gave him a lot of tanks. We built him Bechtel, built him big chemical, I don't know, my father-in-law was chief, chief architect of Bechtel, built Saddam big chemical plants that were used, and we knew that they were used to make mustard gas and other chemical weapons that were being employed against the Kurds and later the Iranians. We knew this. But we sold him these things. You have to remember that Middle Eastern oil is the oil that's used by a great deal of Europe and China and Japan. If we control Middle Eastern oil, we control our biggest potential 
competitors, Japan, All right, China. that's John Perkins, author of Confessions of an Economic Hitman. we got to have John back on this show, by the way. He's, uh, we're going to track him down. He's got a lot of good information. He knows how these things work. Basically, um, the U.S. government obviously recruits people like Saddam Hussein to do its bidding to hijack and overthrow foreign nations and get them into debt with the World Bank so that the U.S. then has leverage to control the resources of those countries. And then the resources are then shipped out and brought back to the United States, typically oil being one of them. This is, by the way, one of the reasons why there's so much tension with Ecuador. Ecuador has a huge oil reserve there in the eastern section of the country, and it has apparently just signed over much of the exploration rights of that sector to China. Yeah, so um, a lot of competition going on there between the U.S. and China to get the natural resources of the world. I mean, what else? What else is it really all about? Power. Power and domination. And uh, let's, uh, let me bring you this piece of news very quickly, then we'll go to a call. Uh, Jennifer Lopez has been forced to apologize for singing happy birthday to a brutal Turkmen dictator accused of torture. She was singing happy birthday to him at a celebration concert, and she has now uh, apologized for singing the song to the most repressive, one of the most repressive regimes in the world, according to Human Rights Watch. And in related news, Lady Gaga has changed the national anthem to end with the line, and the home of the gay. <laughs> yeah, she, she thinks she's living in a country that uh, is like 90% gay or something. Um, maybe her supporters are, but uh, certainly not not the rest of the country. I mean, again, you know, stop shoving in our face, okay, Lady Gaga? You're a warped individual uh, at every level. Airline recruits women who are thin to save fuel. That's right. I didn't say it. They said, this is on CNN, they don't want overweight airline uh, uh, flight attendants because they take too much fuel to fly back and forth. So they're hiring uh, ultra-thin women who also, by the way, happen to fit through the aisles better in an emergency. That's that's no joke. I mean, an emergency situation, you got to be able to get your bod out of the aisle, out of the plane, and help other passengers escape. So there's actually a physical reason behind that as as well. I know it's politically incorrect to talk about women being thin, you know, but uh, hey, that's what this airline is doing. So we're reporting the news. Let's go to George in Connecticut. George, thank you for holding and welcome to the show. Hi, Mike. Uh, I have a, a comment and also a question. A uh, quick comment is uh, I, I know you did a movie, uh, or not a movie, a documentary with uh, Gary Knoll on, this, on the genetically engineered seeds. He has a great uh, idea that he started up with his uh, radio show. He basically, you can dial in and listen to the show uh, while you're, uh, you know, you dial into that number and it'll automatically, you don't need any app, special app or anything like that. I think... Uh, uh, Alex should do something like that. And what we should do is go, have have hundreds of people meet up at, at government buildings and like like the uh, walls of Jericho. They they turn on the show and then have a uh, an amplifier and take the walls <laughs> down of these buildings. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, yeah. Gary Knoll's great, and uh, I I really like his work in in nutrition and truth telling on issues like vaccines as well. Um, I believe he's on the Progressive Radio Network, PRN. Um, I think that Alex's audience is is so large that if if there was a call in number, it would be overwhelmed. They would have, they'd have to have like an NSA style data system here just to handle all those phone calls. But it's it's an interesting idea for sure. Do you have another question? I have a question on uh, something that Alex was talking about on uh, Friday. Maybe you can help me f fill it in, or if you can't, uh, maybe you can talk to Alex and he can get more details on it. That that uh, idea that he was talking about that uh, they basically have in the Obamacare that basically gives them up to a 12-year amnesty on any illegals working so they don't have to work uh, less than 30 hours to uh, avoid the penalty or the cost of Obamacare that basically makes uh, American citizens second-class citizens, uh, citizens in their own country when it's, it comes to hiring. So I would like to know what, what that specific, uh, uh, where he got that information, because I've been trying to find it and I can't find it, and I'd like to uh, uh, bring yeah. that up with, uh, with the immigration bill, because if we can add that with the immigration bill, that's almost a killer app. If it's I know. These people. Well, good, good question, George. I'll, I'll run that by Alex. He might even uh, be hearing your, your comment right now. Look, the thing is, almost nobody knows what's in this bill. That's the thing. It's, it's just like Obamacare. You know, Pelosi saying, let's pass it so we can find out what's in it. 
<laughs> it's 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 so massive and it's so full of pork and deception and you have to you have to navigate it like a minefield a linguistic minefield just to figure out what's in it but you can bet it's bad for america so the, it is true that the amnesty bill is going to try to give uh corporations preferential benefits if they hire these newly documented formerly illegal undocumented immigrants over Americans and that's absolutely true because this bill is designed to destroy America it's not a human rights bill it is an economic destruction bill for America and any Republicans by the way that get behind it are just committing a political suicide so uh, it, it needs to be fixed in, in a huge way let's go to Mike in uh, Denver Mike thank you for your call you're on the air go ahead Hey Mike, how's it going today? It's going uh, pretty good. Are you enjoying the show? You know, you're 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 coming along so great. I was going to tell you that from the very first time I heard you guest host till today, you you're just spectacular. So oh man, well uh, keep I, up the good work. I, we're just we're doing our best. That's 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 all. What's your what's your question or comment? You know, comment out here in Denver. I don't think many of us are going to follow the gun laws, and on the tenth, it's going to actually go to the federal court to see if we can suppress those. Yeah. Our sheriffs did a good job with that. Yeah. My question, given the GMO, oh, how how much is actually in the food supply, is probably not coming out. So is there something that can counter it besides just not buying it? So what's what's your, what's your question then? Well, there's so much wheat and corn GMO that's not labeled and is in the food supply. Yeah. And we probably can't get it back out of the food supply, so I'm wondering what will counter that. Oh, well, I, I think that if we stop planting genetically modified corn and soy, the two largest, and cotton, the, th the three largest GMO crops, remember, wheat is not yet commercially you know, genetically modified, even though it's been contaminated as such. But if we stop planting it, then I think the GMOs will definitely uh, go drastically down. They, we may never get rid of them. You're exactly right on that point because of the genetic pollution and contamination issue, but we can at least get them out of the food supply. You know, a lot of people don't know that a food can be labeled as GMO free, even when it has typically up to 0.5% of GMOs in it. So there's, there's even GMOs in the foods that are certified GMO free. It's a trace level, but it's, you can't get it completely out of the food. A lot of people don't know that. There's some things about the food supply that uh, most Americans have no idea. For example, the USDA certified organic seal does not certify that your food doesn't have super high levels of lead, mercury, arsenic, cadmium, and other heavy metals in it. They're not tested at all. So you can have certified organic food grown in China, imported into the United States, sold at health food stores that is heavily contaminated with lead, which causes developmental you know cognitive impairment in children and also causes mental retardation which i think we're seeing in the culture so so uh i hope that answers your question i got off on a little <laughs> a little tangent there uh anyway uh but thank you for your call there mike let's go to eric in tennessee eric you're on the air go ahead hey mike how's it going today bud it's going pretty good i'm having a good time here today trying to trying to mix it up and and you know inform people and and not make you know not have it too boring Absolutely. at the same time. Yeah, well, you went off on uh, quite the tangent with the, uh, the Napolitano thing there. That was uh, that was visually striking. Yeah, wasn't it? You, you <laughs> like that idea of, of Michael Moore and Janet Napolitano in matrimony? <laughs> in my throat a little, you know? Yeah, ex yeah, exactly. I, I, know, I know the feeling. Uh, go ahead, sir. I had, a, I had just a, a couple of comments. I mean, I, I see these guys like Snowden, and uh, it, to me, it looks like... I mean, it it really takes me back to the Revolutionary War. It's like they're they're running through the streets yelling, "The British are coming." Yeah, you know. I mean, those are those are our guys. And if if the American people won't stand up for them and make more more noise to get them back in this country and get them free and let that information out, I mean. We've already lost. Well, yeah, that's the big issue, and that's what Snowden said was his greatest fear, is that the American people become aware of all of this, and then they sit back and do nothing. And the the theory of why that's happening, at least the theory here at InfoWars, and I, I uh, agree with it, is that the people are so dumbed down, they're brain-numbed zombies in, in a very chemical sense. They're, you know, it's the fluoride, it's the heavy metals in the food that we just talked about, it's the GMOs, it's all these things... People are being stupefied. Uh, <laughs> that's not the correct use of that term, but they're being made into uh, 
uh, brain dead zombies by the chemical assault, which is deliberate, I believe. Now, I, since I started listening to Alex Jones, it's been about a year and a half um, since I actually woke up and, and looked around and, and saw the disaster that was going on around me. I've turned off my dish network. Yep. Completely, I've cut myself off from all of that mainstream crap. I don't even, I don't even look at it online anymore. Yeah, I mean, I get my news directly from Infowars.com. I will listen to Glenn Beck occasionally. I know that's that's a no no, but he does make some good points, and he does give tips to Alex Jones every once in a while. You know, he will kind of nod his way. Even though he says he tries to kill him, which I, I don't understand <laughs> that. No, I don't get that either. I mean, yeah, I. I I listen to Glenn Beck maybe once a month when somebody sends me a tip, but the last tip he had was is going to be this huge announcement that would bring down the government, and I was like, wow, cool, Glenn Beck is going to do some big whistleblowing thing, and then the next day it was like nothing, and, and he never talked about it. I don't know what happened. Uh, I think he got pressured just like they got pressured in the U.K. and pulled that story from the paper. But I mean, why he, would you pre-announce it? If, if you have intelligence that's going to, quote, bring down the government, you don't go on the air the day before and announce that you have that information. Oh, you know, he was, he was eating crow for a week over that, you know. But, I mean, the government yeah. had to have leaned on him. Somebody somewhere leaned on him and said, you know, you, you do this. If you do this, you're a dead man. Well, yeah. I mean, if you if you have that information, you got to get it out immediately so that you aren't the the person that they can kill to stop it. But that see that to me that that was a big disappointment in Glenn Beck. Um, now I know it, it it could happen to anybody. Maybe his source changed his mind, and so that promise was broken to him. Maybe it's not his fault. I don't know. But uh, I hear you. Do you have another question? Yeah, I have one more comment. Uh, the Xbox 360 that they're replacing with the Xbox One. Uh, you know the uh, the connect sensor that you put on the old 360. Right, right. I unplugged mine like a year ago. Yeah, because it's watching you. It unplugs from the back of the 360. I don't know. You know, a lot of people don't seem to realize that, but you can just unplug that bad boy. It's not as sensitive and it's not as good, but if you turn it on picture mode, that thing has a better camera than my that camera phone. Well, not only can you unplug it, but you can take your Xbox 360. And you can set it on some cinder blocks, and you can blast it with a Barrett 50 cal. That also renders it inoperable. So that's what I would suggest to do in legal and lawful areas only. The important thing about the Pro One filter today is that the material we use for removing fluoride and other heavy metals now will remove the latest form of fluoride called hydrofluorosilicic acid. There's no other fluoride reduction filter out there that will remove that type of fluoride. And it's extremely important because today we're hearing more and more cities are using that form of fluoride. We've been having medication forced on us through the water system for quite a while. Most people don't realize it. Most people don't realize the negative effects of fluoride. There's a wide range of health effects that are attributed to fluoride. Bottom line, why should somebody get this new Pro One Pro Pure filter? The reason to buy the Pro One, it's an all in one filter. It's convenient, easy to use. It doesn't require the add on fluoride filter. And in addition, this filter removes the latest form of fluoride called hydrofluorosilicic acid. Back in the last segment here on the Alex Jones Show, we're going to continue with your calls in a minute. I want to plug this book that I think is really important for our time. It's called The Founder's Bible, The Origin of the Dream of Freedom by David Barton. The Founder's Bible. This was sent to me recently by, by a friend. And uh, this Bible not only is a Bible, but uh, it's a New American Standard Bible with uh, lots of explanations, but also it goes into the history of America and why it is a nation that was founded on uh, Christian principles and beliefs and how that became part of the philosophy that was eventually encoded in the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, and many other key documents and key decisions. So check out that book and also check out this movie, State of Mind, The Psycho Psychology of Control. This is available at InfoWarsStore.com. The state, it's called State of Mind. I can't wait to see this video. Like I said, guys, I'm stealing this copy, okay? I'm taking it home. <laughs> they said the case might be empty. Is that that's like your your theft proof copy here in the in the studio? 
There's all kinds of interesting things here behind Alex's desk. <laughs> I'm not going to steal anything, I promise. <laughs> but the uh, state of mind is one of the videos that, oh, it ships out on the 15th of July. Okay, let's go uh, to your calls. Jamie in Michigan. Jamie, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hi, Mike. Hey. Um, I, I had uh, two comments and a question for you. I'll try to make them quick. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, the first comment is uh, I've been pretty uh, awake since uh, 9-11, and I've you know, progressively and progressively got more and more upset with not being able to figure out why, what to do about it. And uh, I watched Network, and uh, in the movie where the guy freaks out on the yeah. newscast show. All right. And he gets all the people to scream at the same time, I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. And I thought, we should have a time at 1 p.m., at least one day a week, you should voice your opinion, call your senator, call your congressman. That's what I've been doing, calling Alex Jones' show at 1 p.m., doing something to literally make your voice be heard. Good advice. Yeah, absolutely. People yeah. should exercise that. But see, everybody's being scared into a state of cowardice where they, they're, they, they think that voicing your opinion is not acceptable or politically correct. You know, you're not supposed to speak out in America. That's the new thing. But those of us who aren't afraid, who are willing to stand up for liberty and say, I'm not afraid of you, our voices will be heard by those people who are afraid of that. You That's know right. We do have some people on our side, and it'll snowball effect. 1 p.m. I'm really trying to promote this most. Everybody I know, I got a group. I'm mad at telling I'm not going to take it anymore on Facebook. Yeah. For people to, you know, join up, trying to get people active. All right, so the group name is I'm not going to take it anymore? I'm mad as hell. Oh, I'm not going to take it anymore. Oh, it's the whole thing. Okay, I'm mad as hell. And it has right. a little rock fist next to it. It's an open group. Uh, you might have to ask to join, take something, all invitations. All right. Then, uh, well, I'll, that's that's cool. People, you can check out the group. I'm mad as hell. Not going to take it anymore. Group on Facebook. Thanks. Uh, thanks for the call. But I agree with you, Jamie. That that we got to voice our opinions. That's that's why I'm here. I know that's why Alex is here as well. Uh, let's go to Michael in Texas. Michael, welcome to the show. Oh, thanks for taking my call, Mike. Uh, yeah, just a couple of things. Yeah, we're you're our favorite. Uh, we're glad to have you on the show. Anytime you come on, we're glad to have you here. In oh, well, thank you, sir. Well. And I'd like to make a comment about Ronnie Reefer Seed. He is one fantastic info warrior. Yeah. He doesn't miss a commissioner's meeting. He's, he's down at City Hall every chance he gets. And if all the listeners would at least put out half of that effort, we can get a whole lot further along down the road. Well, I know Reefer and Seed, like, and that's why they're trying to shut him up, because he's the guy who's actually out there asking questions of, of the, you know, the city council. I mean, everybody should be doing that. Oh, hey, uh, sir, Michael, I apologize, but we have reached the end of the show. Uh, so i got to let you go there. But... Um, Thank you all for listening today, and thank you for your calls. Thank you for all of you for your support. Infowars.com is the website where you can check out the news, Infowars store, the products that support this broadcast. Thank you, crew, for your great job today. And thank all of you for putting up with me. I, I'll be back whenever Alex asks me back. This is Mike Adams signing off on The Alex Jones Show. Take care, everybody. Now you can watch the Infowars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at infowars.com forward slash show.